Aloha and welcome to Cooper Union. What's happening with human rights around the world on ThinkTech Live streaming network broadcasting from our downtown studio in Honolulu, Hawaii on Wananui Kea. I'm your host, Joshua Cooper. And the title of today's episode is Ukraine Municipal Actions for Rights and Rebuilding. Chernihiv commits to reconstruct a school. And joining me today is an amazing hero and everyday person striving to survive in Ukraine. Maxime, Maxime, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you for having me. Nice to meet you. It's great to have you broadcasting live from Chernihiv because it's a city well known around the world and even designated a hero city. It's northeast of Kiev, very close to the Russian border and even closer to Belarus. And Chernihiv is a survivor of a siege by ruthless Russian military, pummeling the people with bombing raids and missile fire for months. And for nearly six weeks, there was no electricity or water. However, the people reemerged and are beginning to rebuild their lives and even schools. And from the apocalyptic attacks and massacrators, the people remain vigilant and committed to realize human rights for all their citizens. Maxime, thank you for joining us. And let us know, what are you focusing on now, now that you're able to survive this important phase of what you endured earlier this year? Uh, Joshua, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I can tell that um, it was quite a normal period uh, because uh, be uh, before this war, we lived uh, quite normal life. So we, uh, we have our job, uh, we, uh, we bought built houses and uh, uh, bought cars and uh, get, got married. And uh, of course, uh, have children, and uh, uh, everything was great. So, and you know, we, and uh, yeah, so we have uh, uh, Russian people here, like kind of a, a brotherhood nation. So, and uh, many people uh, never expect uh, uh, such situation. What we have, and uh, such uh, gifts uh, from. Uh, our uh, kind of brothers like this is a um, uh, shell uh, fragment, uh, which I found near my office here. So, uh, so it happens in, uh, on uh, the 24th of February. Uh, so when uh, I uh, was, um, uh, so I woke up with an explosion here. So, and uh, uh, about, uh, one month and a half period of uh, siege of our city uh, was started. So uh, of course it was uh, quite terrible. Uh, people, um, people were starving. Uh, so we had no water, no electricity uh, for some period of time and uh, people live in town uh, all the time. And then Russians destroyed uh, the main bridge which connect uh, Chernihiv to uh, other Ukraine. So, and uh, after that, uh, this transport uh, moving uh, became much complicated. So, uh, and um, mm. after that, uh, so uh, it was kind of uh, the most dark hour uh, before the um, uh, sunrise kind of that. So, because, uh, some so a week or two weeks after that, um, our militaries uh, finally uh, achieved a victory. So and um, enemy uh, enemy was um, uh, retreated from our city. So and uh, from the kind of mm, end of April, uh, the normal life become uh, become became here. So. Um, we started to come back to, to normal life and uh, mm, trying to rebuild, uh, rebuild our houses, our uh, roads, our infrastructure, uh, and of course, our schools. No, it's really important because Chernihiv is really only an hour and a half, as we learned from the border by tank. And unfortunately, as you described, the citizen realized too soon after the Russian invasion, they were being fully surrounded and shelled. And when you look at what did happen, there was an enormous brutality with the bombing from the school to the stadium. 
And you did share so much how the food was scarce <clears throat> and even really a rare delicacy. And that was really a siege that took place for 39 days. And so it is great to hear that even after all that you endured, that life is starting to come back around, even though you have some small souvenirs as you shared with us. It's important that you're looking at what can happen now going forward and you can see what's possible, of course. And maybe you could share with us what are some of the steps you're looking at? How are you rebuilding the school? And what are other ways that people are putting their lives back together? Uh, so uh, we have a lot of uh, destructed buildings. Uh, so some, uh, some of them uh, uh, destructed totally. So, but some of them um, can be rebuilt. So as, um, as the school number 20. So we have um, some uh, problems with the roof, with, the, uh, with windows and uh, kind of outside part of the building. So um, uh, we, now we are just uh, make uh, calculations and uh, prepare, to, uh, prepare to work uh, because uh, there is still no funding for, for this uh, reconstruction. Um, it's, uh, of course, it's uh, the most important is to recover uh, critical infrastructure of the city and uh, city uh, uh, authorities now are busy about it. So, and uh, schools uh, uh, maybe uh, will be kind of the next stage. So, and that's why we try to do it uh, by ourselves. So, um, mm, uh, a, lot, uh, a, a lot of things we have to do, uh, but now, so it's on this part. I, now I'm looking for kind of, a, um, uh friendly support from uh from of course other countries uh first of all from the united states from maybe city authorities kind of municipal authorities or uh some uh funds uh, on kind of that so uh because um it's good to kind of even to invite people here to show them what we do and uh, to, uh, of course, we will do any reports and other things to show uh, how these funds will uh, will be used. No, that's exciting for you to share because you probably aren't aware, but there's solidarity at the city level around the world. So even here on Maui Island, uh, the mayor there is flying the Ukrainian flag above City Hall until the war is over. So what you're describing and sharing of municipal solidarity of mayors and council members, but also everyday people coming together is really important to see what we can do together. And as great as you said, now that you're looking at rebuilding, that even at this space, this part of Ukraine, it's more safe and that people could come and even begin to assist and use their hands to make a difference in Chernihiv and share what's going on now. Uh, yes, um, a lot of people uh, want to help us uh, in this rebuilding. So our mayor uh, visited uh, Switzerland uh, last week. Uh, uh, so he's been to the Davos. He's been to Davos, uh, and uh, so he made uh, some connections with people around the world who want to help uh, uh, our city. So it's um, it's uh, great that uh, uh, a lot of uh, con people from uh, from many countries w uh, want to help us. So and uh, uh, we really appreciate your support. So of course, uh, uh, um, what you do, what uh, uh, I think that. United States, the United States uh, uh, may, uh, makes the most uh, part of help uh, and uh, your military help is uh, mm, very important now. So uh, land lease and what our militaries uh, have now and will have in future. So it, help, uh, it helps to defend us 
so to make uh, to, uh, to uh, kind of um, so we need um, uh, the security here uh, first of all before reconstruction so now uh, it's everything quiet here so the last month there was no bombing no uh, any any sign of war um, uh that is going on in ukraine uh in the eastern part of ukraine now in donetsk and lugansk region so uh but uh, uh here is everything quiet and uh, now you know i think that maybe the question uh, the question is uh, uh what we ask uh, to each other is uh if uh, russians uh, uh, come, will come back here come back here so if or not so or uh, and if uh, they come so when it uh, when it comes when when they come no that's so, a really important point and as you described switzerland it is true uh, there was davos the world economic forum and ukraine had a presence yeah. there besides your mayor the klitschko brothers also at the municipal level as mayors of Kiev participated and they even set up a Ukraine house. And there was also, uh, they did take over the former location of the Russian delegation and they changed the Russia house into the Russia war crimes house. So it's really what you're sharing is you do hope it's over, but then to of course remember how fragile and really important life is but how quickly things can turn and so it is bold i think that you're rebuilding a school but i think for the children they would love to have their lives get back to normal as quick as possible yes uh, of course so children you know children uh, here is um uh, adopting uh, maybe much uh, quicker than other people so uh, honestly if um, if uh, the school is uh, uh, destructed like uh, school number 20 so they start they are studying online uh, and uh, so and uh, for at this moment it's okay for them of course it's not good for kind of uh, for future so it's better than to have a normal uh, school life uh, so um, i think that uh, uh we have a lot of uh, work to do now so and uh, yes of course i think that um with uh, the help of all allies um i hope we uh, we uh, we won't have any invasion in the in the nearest future uh, uh, at least kind of thing. no we definitely hope we've turned the page and continuing with what we discussed also in switzerland since you mentioned it uh, Boris Bondarev, he was the Russia counselor to the UN in Geneva. He resigned recently, calling the war in Ukraine, quote, a crime against the Ukrainian people, as well as the Russian population. And he said, never have I been so ashamed of my country as on February 24th of this year. So he, re he also said, I regret to admit that over all these 20 years, the level of lies and unprofessionalism in the work of the foreign ministry has been increasing all the time. Over the most recent years, this has become simply catastrophic. So it is good to see high-level people, really diplomats, agreeing with what you're sharing that these atrocious actions are shameful, but also that we have to all unite together to make sure that it doesn't come back to your homeland and to your town of Chernihy. Yes, Joshua, yes, I totally agree with you. <laughs> yes. And so looking at those steps of what life is like now, I know there is a siege for 40 days. How are people coming back to normal now? Is there now food coming out that you have enough of your basic essentials? What are the things that are still miss the most by you on a daily basis i know you're already at your office early this morning uh what is it like going to work now in the morning after that siege and what are ways that people can help to allow your lives to be restored as close to normal as possible considering 
a war is still going on in your homeland? Uh, so, you know, um, uh, me and my team, uh, we restored uh, the work of uh, our uh, business uh, almost uh, fully. So uh, now we work because, uh, you know, uh, our sphere of, uh, of work, uh, construction and reconstruction of buildings, uh, it is um, um, much help. So it, it needed now. So uh, people need our services. And um, mm, uh, so it was quite easy to restore our work. So, and uh, now we work uh, even uh, harder than was before the war. Uh, uh, people who work in other spheres, uh, of course, they have uh, mm, some, some problems with uh, uh, kind of with, with their business, because, uh, for example, uh, touristic sphere is totally uh, kind of Distracted in our in our country uh, because people can't um, uh, move uh, uh, to to cross uh, the border of Ukraine now. So um, and um, so the, uh, this is why a lot of businesses are closed. Uh, but if you just uh, go through the city uh, in the middle of the day, so you. You can't find any um, un, unusual things. Uh, maybe only uh, the buildings which was uh, bombed. So it honestly, it's not uh, it's not a lot of them, but some uh, some people. And by the way, this is a, a kind of a air alarm. I uh, hear. So we um, we have this. Um, alarm uh, information but only information or uh, this is the part of war what we have uh, um, mm, now here but of course we don't see any uh, any even airplanes uh, flying uh, across our seat now for, for the last month so i mean that uh, the life is um, almost normal so we, we live now we live life like uh, it was before the war. Uh, so you're able to get groceries, uh, you're able to have yes. basic supplies, and those things have at least been restored, as opposed to the stories we heard of couples having to separate, one finding water and one finding food. We know for Chernihiv, uh, it's also it's getting warmer, which is good, because there was no electricity for a long time as well. Yeah, uh, now it's uh, everything. Uh, everything is uh, recovered. So even uh, even water in uh, uh, in the night. So this morning at four a.m. <laughs> I, I had water. Like uh, so, the only thing maybe that um, I can do now, uh, which I mentioned, so I can't visit Hawaii now. So <laughs> so. Uh, other things are uh, absolutely usual. So in in uh, but it's only in our region, uh, because uh, what we know now, uh, Severodonetsk is uh, uh, it's it is the city in Lugansk region where uh, very hard uh, battle um, is going on now, uh, and um, uh, so Russians try to take. Uh, all a uh, whole Lugansk region uh, by their control, uh, and um, uh, United States support and uh, United States artillery and uh, other military devices are very uh, important, and um, your help is uh, is very important for us. No, and it's 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 great to hear and then equally alarming at the same point where you know liberated towns and cities are turning now from surviving to mourning those lost and eventually as you're describing now picking up the pieces but like you shared still swaths of the country are occupied or in the midst of fighting but what is encouraging is to see how quickly 
you've been able to pick up the pieces and then at least be able to have a sense of humor and look to the brighter sunshine again of even visiting Hawaii with a lot of sun. But then of course, it's the physical infrastructure that you described. I think at least eight airports have been destroyed, at least 37,000 kilometers of road. And then there's other economic damage that you can then look at how it will be rebuilding. So it is interesting to see how that's going forward. And there's been some ideas of how it could be re rebuilt. We heard one idea was issuing bonds. Uh, others was that Moscow should pay. Others is confiscating the frozen assets and then using those funds then to be able to rebuild, to make sure that you have the resources to rebuild the school. Where is the school in the town? And, and what are the first steps that you're looking at taking uh, so that students will once again be able to go into their classroom and be able to attend school in school number 20? Uh, uh the school is in the uh, middle uh, in the middle of the city so it's just uh, across the road uh, uh near my office so it's uh, and um, uh i think that uh, we should make uh, this building uh, uh kind of able to uh, to, to, to open classes uh, to the September of this year. So it would be great. Uh, maybe we can't uh, do all uh, what we need to uh, at this period uh, to, to this deadline, but uh, usually children uh, start uh, their uh, studying at the 1st of September. So this is uh, the first deadline for us. Um, so in uh, by the other uh, things about um, about infrastructure, about roads, uh, and other things. So I pretty, I'm pretty sure that uh, we are able to rebuild everything. Uh, and um, maybe uh, so. I I see a lot of uh, a lot of countries and a lot of uh, organization, international organizations like UN. Uh, uh, which wants to uh, want to help us. So, and uh, I, I, I think that uh, uh, everything is possible, uh, but first of all, we need to uh, um, kind of provide a security here. So uh, that uh, if people who, for example, who will help us uh, with the reconstruction of the school number 20, so they should, uh, uh, be uh, confident that uh, this school uh, won't uh, shell in uh, next day, kind of that. So, uh, and that's why we need this anti uh, kind of anti air systems and uh, and other military devices first, I think. So, and that's why it's so important uh, all of your military support. No, and it is a, exciting to hear that you're already hoping the students will be able to be in school. Uh, our school starts here August 22nd. That's when the University of Hawaii starts. and We'd be starting our classes. So it's exciting to know that anything that we could do together and coordinate would actually be possible that in the first week of school, when we come back from our first week, that we could also see the students in school 20 also being in their class, hopefully, and being able, if all goes forward as planned and it continues where it is now, where there's no more conflict where you live, that the kids, when Hawaii will be going back to the university, the kids in Chernihiv would also be able to go back to the classroom. Yeah, even, you know, I, I even have some university, university teacher from Chernihiv who kind of wants to, wants to speak with you and tell you about uh, their plans for st for studying and even principal of school number 20. Um, uh, so, and uh, if it would be possible, so it would be great to uh, to speak with them. So Absolutely. They, yeah. No, in the future, I think a future show we can focus on is education in Ukraine and we could focus from school number 20 
up to the university and see what I think a lot of people don't know around the world is we always have so much in common, but the other side is even if there's tragedy, the ability of the human spirit that you exemplify of starting over again and picking up the pieces, uh, we can see how you're ready to go and make sure that the school that's closest to you has all that it needs. And I think that's what's really important is if everyone uh, takes in what we call Hawaii or Kuleana responsibility, and you're taking that responsibility to then rebuild that school, but then it is great to be able to connect students here in Hawaii and students from Hawaii with you in Chernihiv in the Ukraine to see what do we all desire in life and how do we make sure that these war that's been brought upon you and your people with that you like you said earlier never imagined that we can make sure it never happens again and what we can learn in schools but then what we can do daily to prevent future wars yes um i i totally agree and uh i feel that um uh, everything is possible with um, so much this great support uh, from the whole world and from you. No, no, we're glad to hear that uh, we can at least have this conversation. I know I remembered when we first started the special series looking at the Ukraine that I never thought that we'd be able to have a conversation with someone in Chernihiv uh, before I would almost say at least many more months and many more moons passing. So it is great to hear from you. Uh, we're glad that you're able to pick up the pieces and we're sorry that there's some shrap metal and other things and part of those pieces. But what we look forward to uh, as we conclude our talk today is focusing on education as one of those important building blocks to make sure that the children in Chernihiv are able to get back to school, as you said, by September 1st. And then more importantly, even to continue the conversation with college students so that people can come together. And that was really the point of today is looking at the local level of what we can do, even if we're in global systems where horrible things are happening all around us. Yes, thank you very much, Joshua. It, uh, it's, it's really nice to meet you and uh, it would be great to see you and uh, other people from the United States, from Hawaii, uh, here in Ukraine. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm inviting, yes. Thank you so much. And I definitely look forward to uh, coming to visit and maybe uh, hopefully we could cut a ribbon on the new school and even uh, have classes at the university there with the professor who I look forward to meeting in the future. So thank you so much for making time, especially with thank so you. much else going on in Chernihiv today. Thank you very much. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.